Hello and welcome to Lotus Cup Europe. We're kicking off the 2019 season here in Germany supporting the Bosch Hockenheim Historic Jim Clark Revival, a very special event for Lotus enthusiasts. are in assembly ready for the first race of the season and it's a rolling start. Ben Spaller is on pole for what's going to be a wet race followed by Xavier Georges and John Rass whilst last year's production champion Sven Pettersen will be starting the year on pole in the production class. Pole position to Ben Spaller from Xavier Georges, row two John Rass and Nikolai Ibsen. Fifth on the grid is Jason McAnulty ahead of Tamas Faza. And it's David McAnulty and Christopher LaRoche. Thierry Verhista and Jean-Baptiste Lou on row five, completing our top ten. Willie Klein and Anthony Fournier on row six. David Harvey next from Janos Santa. And it's Christophe Lisson and Robin Nilsson. Nathalie Genoux Prache and Ian Fedick on row nine. Row ten, Eric Libor and Istvan Kirali. Sven Pedersen and Jean-Pierre Genoux Prache next up from Dave Carr and Mark Yates. Then it's Danny Holland and Kai Cederholm on row 13, row 14. Paul Patterson and John Engelbrus and Daniel Palmer completing the grid. Sentence of deja vu, I'm pretty sure it was wet a couple of years ago when we kicked off. The 2017 season with Xavier Georges and Christophe Lissandra winning, V6 and 211 respectively. On board with John Rass looking ahead at Xavier Georges. But it is Ben Spaller, the defending champion, who starts on pole position, looking to continue the great work he did last year. Lights ablaze from the defending champion who leads them down into North Curve Turn 1 here at Hockenheim. On board with Nikolai Ibsen, passed by Jason McAnulty. McAnulty getting up into third position in the early stages of this race. From La Roche, the leading 2.11 open drive. You'll notice this year that the 2.11 class and the open class together now on board with Tamas Vaza, champion from three years ago now. Nikolai Ibsen, who's had some work done on that car overnight to get him out. Team have worked hard and through on the inside line goes David McInulty with a good move on the inside of Vaza and a spin for Paul Patterson in the production class. So disappointing for Paul, Jason McAnulty about to pass Xavier Georges, he's flying isn't he at the moment, on board with Xavier Georges, John Rass goes through as well, Ben Spaller the car ahead of those two on shot, but John Rass double champion of course was uh, 2017 winner and 2015, with all the driver, the former champions coming back, it shows you that the drivers do stay with this class, they love racing in Lotus Cup Europe as the leading 211 open class car Frank Laroche La getting right in the mix here looking at David McAnulty he's going to go through watch for McAnulty back on the inside line Frank is using the outside where there might be a little bit more grip here in the wet proof of that as he passes Tamas Vaza oh and a spin for Jean-Pierre Genoux Praché one of the front runners in the production class has a gyration fires it up pretty quickly but I think he's going to be passed by Kai Cederholm in blue, the one thing you'll spot in the production class is how very competitive it is and how many different drivers we see on the podium over the course of the season, certainly did last year. And here's the driver we expect to be on the podium, or hope to, Danny Holland, the Mission Motorsport driver, just uh, side by side there with Daniel Palmer, Westminster Stone back driver Danny Holland, good to see him in the championship for this year. John Rass, a little bit of spray to have to deal with. There is John in third, moves out, takes a slightly tighter line down into turn one. Xavier Georges in fourth place. So this is the battle with Nikolai Ibsen, Frank La Roche looking to the outside line. Not quite as much grip on that part of the circuit on the outside as he found earlier on, but it's Bench Baller who leads this one, the Hungarian driver, 
won last year's championship from Steve Williams in second place. Thomas Vassan third, David McAnulty fourth in the standings. Open champion was Andrew Wright last year. Christophe and Franck Laroche sharing the car, of course, on the, on the way to their 211 title ahead of Natalie Junior Prachet, very consistent French woman, and then Christophe Lissandre third from Anthony Fournier. All of those drivers are back in the championship this year. Dave Carr in the 20 machine there getting stuck in, and Tamas Vazan having a good old dice here with Franck Laroche. Superb battle, an in interclass battle going on there. Laroche is clear. Try and look back. You can see that Laroche has got two cars between himself as uh, Jean-Pierre Junior Prachet has another gyration. Well, he's trying hard. Anthony Fournier in the mix there as well. And that's the Lou 77 car having a spin. Out of podium position now, I think, in 211 Open. Well, tricky conditions for these very powerful cars. And they are very much on the knife edge at places as we've seen. John Rass running in third place at the moment. Bence Baller out front in the black car, the gold and purple machine of Jason McAnulty running in second. Frank Laroche still getting stuck into that outside line and passes Xavier Georges to go up into fourth position. Problems for East Van Kirli, the new Hungarian into the championship. And that's going to put the yellow flags out. There in 117 is Danny Holland around the outside of Jean-Pierre Junior Prachet. So those boys battling it out for podium finishes at the moment in the production class. On board with uh, Jean-Pierre again. Natalie Junior Prachet there in the 211 immediately in front. And ahead of Natalie, Dave Carr in the number 20 open class car. We've got. Uh, 31 being attended to, so East Van Kirley will be recovered. Drivers will have to exercise a little bit of caution on that part of the track. And power down a little bit early there for Tamas Fazan around the outside line. As a result of that, he's going to go David McInulty, grabs the inside for the next turn, but Fazan gets back on the pace very quickly indeed. You can see the waved yellows there. So through they go. And the, the race, I'd like to say, settling down nicely, but in these conditions, very difficult for the drivers to be able to do that. Under yellows, of course, no overtaking, and effectively have to come off the gas as well. Christophe Lisson running well at the moment in the 211 category. Has a look at the inside line here. He's going to make a pass. He does, so favouring the inside line as opposed to his class colleague, Franck Laroche, who's been using the outside line. It's Anthony Fournier, dicing with David McAnulty. And in the wet, as I say, we do tend to see some of the quicker 211s mingling with the V6s, as we did a couple of years ago. As I mentioned, when Christophe Lissandre won the second race of the opening meeting of the season. On board with Franck Laroche once again, having to deal with the spray as well. There is maybe a little bit of respite on the horizon. Some blue skies in the distance, which may well help things. Franck Laroche challenging for third place and it's John Rass, the double champion, immediately in front at the moment. Lights on from Bentz Baller, rescue vehicle to the right of screen, having completely uh, successfully completed the mission on East Van Kirali's car. Jason McAnulty is uh, now passed by John Rass and look at Laroche in the mix as well and off onto the gravel goes David McAnulty. It is so slippery out there. So Franck Laroche now looking for a, an overall podium position here on Jason McAnulty. Again goes to the outside line where he seems to find a lot more grip but McAnulty's having none of it. Goes to the outside line. Just under 14 minutes left in this race. The Westminster Stone backed car of Danny Holland still racing well. Goes a little bit too far there. And that's Kai Cederholm looking up the inside line in the 32 machine. Kai gets in front of Danny who is immediately back on the gas, immediately on the outside line and smoothly makes a pass. But look how he's controlling the car. There's a wonderful onboard shot there. 
but a little bit too much power here and around goes Danny Holland again wheel straightens up Kai Cederholm is going to repass. they're all having their problems on this very very tricky circuit wave jellos again and that's to recover David McAnulty from the gravel this is uh, Thierry uh, bigger part number 17 Thierry yeah Thierry Verheist up ahead of Winnie Klein first time we've seen Winnie in our coverage the German driver very well warm welcome to the championship to Winnie and a good battle going on there between those two four 11th place just shy of the top 10 at the moment Front La Roche still busy battling hard now and Jason McAnulty goes wide and La Roche is going to try and come through on the inside line McAnulty will rejoin how much momentum has he got he's got enough to hang on to the position there Jason McAnulty in third place but it's Benz Baller still the race leader but we're hearing he's picking up a penalty for a yellow flag infringement and that means that on the timing clock John Rass is now the race leader now we'll bear that in mind but follow the race on tarmac Rass looking to try and close in on Ben Spaller big battle for third Franck Laroche leading the 211 open category now looking at a tight line into the corner with 11 minutes to go for Heast and Klein having a good battle at the moment it is the battle of the conditions as well as the battle of the other drivers just now Klein pretty well clear at the moment of, of anyone else so he can afford to have a go at Thierry Verheist Nicola Ibsen the Dane getting stuck in as well and we've got the battle for fourth now because on the outside line is Xavier Georges Ibsen's going to have a look down the inside line and try and go through this is for third position in V6 fourth place overall and now third place overall because Xavier Georges goes through tries to go through on the inside line of Franck Laroche you've got to love a good interclass battle especially when it's Lotus Cup Europe Nikolai Ibsen looking ahead at Xavier Georges and Ibsen's going to make the move down the inside line here Franck Laroche immediately in front of us in the 57 car the golden purple of currently fourth place on the road Jason McAnulty three wide there Franck Laroche sees Xavier Georges going tight there and coming back in towards the stadium complex here Tamas Faza in yellow looks on the inside line as well this is turn 10 the sax curve good move by Vaza and look how the back end twitches really fighting the car so so tricky out there today for this one let's hope for better weather for race two the Roche still far and away the leading 211 driver and he might be at the back of this group at the moment but just look behind massive space between himself and second and third in class Christophe Lissandra is second Anthony Fournier third in the 211s the production class led by defending champion Sven Pedersen from Mark Yates at the moment just to keep you appraised of the situation in the uh, other classes and a reminder that out front Ben Spaller is the race leader in black and gold but might lead the race on circuit but has that time penalty on the clock this man John Rass is leading the race and I don't know whether he knows if there's a penalty for Ben Spaller so we'll watch and enjoy the race on the tarmac which is what the folk here at Hockenheim are going to do themselves 2.8 mile Hockenheim circuit Tamas Fazan looks on the inside line fighting the car again and he's going to look at the inside line on Franck La Roche we've got Xavier Georges now back with us as well in car with Franck La Roche again looking at the outside line now when Franck goes wide to find that grip potentially it means effectively I suppose leaving a a V6 size door on the inside line for the likes of Xavier Georges but I don't think there's the grip there which is why Franck's looking to the outside line Tamas Vaza again still working the car so so hard Jason McAnulty fourth uh, fifth on the road because ahead of him is uh, Nikolai Ibsen Ibsen third beg your pardon Jason McAnulty is fourth then Thomas Faza and Franck Laroche that's about to change Laroche scythes pass makes the move on Thomas Faza problems for Robin Nilsson in the 57 
Thierry Verhees to win. He climbed going past Winnie, the only German on home tarmac here this weekend, by my reckoning, in the race. As uh, Vazin is again passed by Xavier Georges, Eric Libor in the 211 takes a gyration. Is he going to keep it out of the barrier? Doesn't even glance the barrier, so good recovery from Eric in the number six car. The Frenchman back on track and will rejoin. He, that puts him further away from a podium battle. Xavier George enjoying his race. I'm sure he wants to get stuck into the V6s in front, but at the moment it has to deal with Franck Laroche. Franck Laroche on his way to, by my reckoning, a fifth class win in his career. Might be wrong about that. There is the battle for the production. Sven Pettersson is the leading production runner at the moment and will open the defence of his championship title with a win but coming under pressure still from the second place car Mark Yates we saw in yellow back with Franck Laroche Tadas Vaza immediately in front Laroche still trying everything to get further up and this is the great thing about interclass racing if you're away from your classmates then you can have a race with people in the other category Eric Libor passed by Natalie Jeanne Praché. Natalie, one of last year's consistent front runners, and was second in the championship for 2.11s. And he's up ahead of Eric Libor, taking sixth place in class as Tanas Vazan goes wide and Franck Laroche through. So too is Xavier Georges. Clock is ticking down. This is going to be going on to the last lap here. And it is. Bence Baller still on the road and again I go back to that message does John Rass know about the penalty I don't think he does because he is racing hard now looking up the inside line can he go through Bence Baller's got a little bit more momentum as they pass the pit lane exit on the exit of turn one heading down towards turn two and then that little kink turn three before they go on to the parabolica John Rass still challenging hard Rass taking, he can afford at the moment to take these wider lines. He doesn't have to defend himself from that uh, second position on the road. So it is very much a case of attack for John Rass. Lost a little bit of ground there, but will start to build the momentum up and try to get back as they head into the stadium complex for the last time. This is into Sachs curve and running a little bit wide now is Benz Baller but that doesn't work, Baller again, although running wide, seeming to find grip, but Rass comes again, gets closer and closer, again explores the outside line himself now, and he's challenging for the lead. Here comes Rass, having a good look here as they now head through the mobile one curve. Benz Baller driving defensively with the time penalty is in ninth place, Benz Baller. So John Rass is going to open up the 2019 campaign with a win. I'm just checking the record, see whether he's done that before, won the opening race of the end. I don't think he has, but uh, he's certainly given Benz Baller a race to remember. It's Baller that takes the checker, John Rass in second place, third will go to Nikolai Ibsen, they weren't that far behind fourth is Jason McAnulty but remember that's third on the road, on board with Franck Laroche who will take the 211 open class victory, he's rightly delighted with that, he's given us a very entertaining race so a good win, here is the battle for the productions, the yellow, black and white car of Sven Pettersson is leading that at the moment with Mark Yates right behind and Sven looks like he's going to open up has a quick look across great driver awareness there from Sven having to deal with the 21 car of Daniel Palmer who's running in 16th place but Pedersen to the outside uh, line begging pardon Yates to the outside line but it's Sven Pedersen that takes the production win in the white yellow black car Mark Yates immediately behind thumbs up from Sven Pedersen they've enjoyed their race in difficult conditions but the overall win going to John Rass, who does a little bit of showboating for us there. What about that? To finish off the race, a celebration from John. 
So the outright win for John Rash from Nikolai Ipsen at Jason McAnulty. Frog LaRoche winning the 211 Open class. Xavier George next from Thomas Bazan. Christophe Sandra and Anthony Fournier second and third in the 211s. Then it was Ben Spaller and Philippe Liu in 10th. 11th Thierry Verhees from Robin Nielsen and Winnie Klein. Janos Santo and Ian Fennick next up from Daniel Palmer. Productions won by Sven Pedersen from Mark Yates. Then it was Eric Libor. Natalie Giroud Prache with in third position in the productions, Jean-Pierre Genoux Prachet ahead of Danny Holland and Dave Clark, Kai Cederholm, David McAnulty, Paul Patterson, Dave Harvey and Isvan Kirali. John Nikolai, congratulations. First and second overall. How was the race? The race was really nice for me. Uh, you know, I, I like the race when the, when the weather is wet and I had a really nice fight with Benz. Uh, I would have preferred to overtake him um, during the race, but uh, the, the result is the result and the he overtook under the yellow flag, so okay, uh, bad for him and uh, very nice for me, and I'm happy for the result. And you? Yeah, it was an interesting race. It was uh, very wet, very slippery, and I had a very interesting weekend. I, uh, my engine blew on Friday, so the boys, thanks to them, they've been at it all night, and we were ready, you know, 20 minutes before the start, and. We started fourth and we ended up second. Jason, congratulations, third overall. How did you deal with the change of conditions out on the track? Uh, yeah, thanks Elise. Yeah, it was uh, very good fun. Um, had a good start uh, when it was raining hard. Yeah, I pushed through. I come from fifth on the qualifying to second. Uh, I could challenge for the lead for a few laps, but then when the sun came out, it started uh, drying out. Um, yeah, it got very slippery. Uh, I dropped back down and yeah, but, podium good good start to the season frank congratulations a win in the 211 open class amazing start to the season vraiment une super course super début de saison en effet euh, la voiture est très 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 bien euh, ça s'est bien déroulé elle était bien réglée j'avais trouvé les bonnes trajectoires hier aux essais libres donc j'ai pu en profiter puis euh, et puis mettre, mettre les roues euh, sur la course dessus et euh, je me suis vraiment vraiment super bien amusé avec une très belle bagarre aussi avec euh, euh, xavier et jason Donc euh, vraiment super content du résultat. Voilà, merci. Christophe, congratulations, second in the 211 Open class. How was it? Ah merci. Euh, bah, je reviens loin, sachant que je m'étais super mal qualifié. Donc euh, grâce à la pluie, j'ai pu euh, faire une remontée et faire une, une honorable deuxième place, qui était euh, franchement, euh, voilà, j'en aurais rêvé au départ de la course. Donc franchement, c'est bien. Mais euh, on verra sur le sec, si c'est sec demain, euh, si je peux confirmer. Voilà. Anthony, congratulations, third in the 211 class. How was it? It was a very difficult race. Uh, rainy, very uh, sleepy. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy to, to finish and uh, to be on the podium. And uh, I'm also very happy that uh, the team is on the, the first and third place. So. Uh, I hope tomorrow it will be uh, dry. Sven, Mark, you had a really good season last year with lots of fights. Are you looking forward to another year of close racing? I guess so. Yes, it's looking yeah, that way. It's going to be, be uh, an interesting season. We've both come along a little bit in our uh, abilities, I would say. So yeah, it should be, uh, should be a tight, tight race up to the end of the season. Yeah, I really think last year it could have been Mark, it could have been me. I was lucky in the end, but it was really close. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this season plays out, really. I see so. it now. As long as you don't hit me anymore. No, exactly. Right. But we're yeah. still friends this season anyway. <laughs> That's going to be big fun. Big yeah. fun. It's been really so. Jean-Pierre, congratulations on a production podium. A great start to the season. It was a wet race. How did you deal with the rain? Well, it was entertaining, let's say that. <laughs> uh, I was fighting for first place uh, of, the, of the class at the, uh, the first lap, uh, but then I spun. <laughs> so uh, finishing third after a spin, I think uh, altogether is uh, quite a good result, but it was really hard, really hard.
cars are on the grid, ready for the second race of the weekend, and it's a standing start. Ben Spalla is on pole, followed by Xavier Georges and John Rass. Whilst over in the production class, Mark Yates will be hoping to take the win from Sven Pettersson. Conditions, thankfully, so much better for race two. Out go the lights, and away goes Ben Spalla from pole position, being challenged by Xavier Georges. Slow start by Nikolai Ibsen. But they're all away, which is the good news. And heading down into Turn 1 for the first time, a half-hour race here for the Avon Tyres Lotus Cup Europe. They're all safely through, so it's Xavier George second. Third place is John Rass, but challenging for second. Rass around the outside line of Xavier George. Can't quite do it. George has got the momentum. Jason McAnulty here going for the cut back on John Rass, who is challenging for second, but finds himself down in fourth. Good move by Jason McAnulty. Third in race number one, up to third again at this very early stage in race two. John Rass fourth, fifth position is Tamas Vazin. Christopher Laroche, who takes over from Franck in this one, leading the 211 Open category. Philippe Lou taking over from Jean-Baptiste Lou sideways moment there for Jason McAnulty. And John Rass had to react to that as well. He had a little bit of a tech slapper on too. Tamas Fazan wasn't close enough to move up into fourth, but it's Ben Spaller in the race lead, settling into the lead here with a couple of lengths as they come down into turn seven, clear at the moment. Make their way down into turn eight. Daniel Palmer on board looking at Philly Blue and in fact being passed by Ian Fennick around the outside. Fennick was fifth in class in race number one. Santa 14th in the race overall. Meanwhile, it's Ben Spaller, the reigning champion, out front. John Rass getting racy and having a look there at Jason McAnulty for third place, but with Tamas Vazan right behind him, he doesn't want to get too. A bit of a, bit of a wobbly moment there for the race leader, Ben Spaller. And Xavier George will have sensed that. Early stages, of course, of this race, and they're all just finding their feet at the moment. Bala maintains the lead at the end of the opening lap. John Rass is in fourth, he's going to have a look for third. Tries the inside line, in the end just as a tighter line. David McAnulty here with Robin Nilsson immediately in front. And also the 211 of Anthony Fournier in the mix. David McAnulty did lose a little bit of time off the start. Let's have a look at some of the starts for you here. Nikolai Ibsen, we mentioned, got a little bit bogged down, got punished by three other cars. David McAnulty, a little bit bogged down as well. And uh, he's passed by Robin Nilsson there on the inside in the 59 car. Ian Fennick had a decent start. So he won't be too unhappy with his start, but a couple of drivers lost out there. I'd say David McAnulty and Nikolai Ibsen, the, the men that really lost out. And challenging for the lead is Jason McAnulty on the outside line of Ben Spaller as they come up into turn five. Jason here having to use the outside line, really, because Ben Spaller is driving superbly. He's not leaving any gaps at all. Now, if you go for the outside on one corner, it can convert to the inside later on. That's what Jason's trying to do. He's got the space behind him at the moment, the breathing space, to try those outside lines. If he takes a wide line in, might be able to maybe go for a cutback. But at the moment, Ben Spaller is driving very well indeed in the race lead. McAnulty still chasing hard. Jason third in race number one. And still that gap over Xavier George third. John Rass is fourth. And having a look now at the inside line of the number nine car, pulls off that move, that's the sort of gap that Jason McAnulty's looking for, and Robin Nilsson has a spin! And now was he collected by David McAnulty, who was certainly avoiding action from the number seven car, who is into the advertising hoarding. What a sad end to the race for those two. Arguably, McAnulty, David McAnulty, if he hadn't had that slight bogging down at the start, he wouldn't have been in that position because we saw Robin Nilsson pass him see the full lead up to that but uh, sad to see those two guys out of the race Thomas Fazan passed Xavier George now so Xavier dropping back not looking too happy at the moment at all and Thomas Fazan the Hungarian driver six in race number one has gone through Here comes the battle for the productions Mark Yates in the yellow car just ahead of the pink 211 of Natalie Julien Frasche on board with second place in class Sven Pedersen Swede chasing 
French woman chasing British production class leader. And the 2.11 here, for, from Pettersson's point of view, he wants Natalie to go ahead so that he can have a straight run, but we're now looking at the battle for the lead again with Jason McAnulty once again trying that outside line, but he just can't seem to make the car stick around the outside of Benz Baller holds on to lead position. Jason will try again, he's going to have a look here, isn't quite room, goes back to the outside line. Still working hard is Jason McAnulty, he's got to be careful that he doesn't leave a gap on the inside. Another spinner, that is Thierry Verheist in the 17. Back to the race lead, McAnulty still just working the wheel and trying to work out. Now they're getting into coming down into turn seven, Robin Nilsson's car being attended, so Ben Spaller, amongst all the others, of course, very mindful that they need to react with care to that section of the track, and that gave you a very graphic example of why, because you've got the rescue crew right on site to move Robin Nilsson's car, they don't want any more damage to Robin's car, hence the yellow flag zone and the rescues, and it's only just off the track, so it is a very prone position. The rest of the track is live, and Sven Pedersen knows that, and he's going to try and hunt down Mark Yates. Natalie Junior Frache ahead of them has now cleared Mark Yates, and will try to move further up the field herself, and Yates has a wobbly moment there, that will have scrubbed off speed, and Sven Pedersen's going to challenge for the lead. Watch the momentum now from Pedersen in the 88 car, goes to the inside line along the home straight, and has got the line going into the next corner, but Yates is getting back up to speed. He's got the sweep around turn one, retains the lead as Mark Yates. Great bit of racing from the leading two production class drivers. There is Natalie Julie Prasche at the head of the field. John Rass is in third. McAnulty goes wide, gets a little bit of opposite lock there, scrubs off speed and through to second place. Now goes John Rass. That's what we said could happen. It did. This is taking the pressure off Benz Baller, who continues to lead. John Rass now up to second, and Jason McAnulty, after challenging for the lead, now has former champion Taras Vazan right behind him. Xavier George is next up, then the 99 of Nikolai Ibsen, the Dane, in sixth position. Wow, what a race we're having here. Next up is uh, Christopher LaRoche in the 57 car. He's the leading 211 driver still. And John Rass starting to pile pressure on. Tamas Vazan looking all over the back of Jason McAnulty. Was going to go for a move, but then... Oh, hang on. Yellow flag zone, so backs out of that. They, they come off the gas for that. Pretty much go back to line astern. stern. We rejoin the production class. Still headed by Mark Yates, who, after that worrying moment, gathered it all up. But fair play to Mark Yates for having a cool head there and realising that if he got back up to speed to carry the momentum along the straight and back into the lead. That's going to be a little bit of a confidence boost for him over Sven Pettersson. Sven, from Sven's point of view, he knows that he won the first race. Here they come past Robin Nilsson's car, which is still being cleared. Great work being done by the rescue crew, but seemingly having a, a little bit of a struggle to move that car at the minute. And uh, they'll get it cleared as soon as they can, heading towards one-third distance in this race. Pettersson very much focused on the rear end of the 37 car. Sven, the reigning champion, there it is move. You can see why it's taken a, a big effort to move it. The marshal's also picking up the detritus as well. Anthony Fournier is third in class at the moment for the 2.11s, coming under pressure from Philippe Lou, who's having a look here and got a very good run, Philippe Lou. Looks to the outside line, so he's doing a little bit of a Jason McAnulty there for third place in the 2.11 open class, but it's Benz Baller still up front. Jason McAnulty now back into second. Christopher Laroche is in seventh, by far and away the lead 2.11 open class runner at the moment. And Nikolai Ibsen, big open door there as the number nine Xavier Georges runs very wide indeed. And Nikolai Ibsen, after his sluggish start, beginning to make a little bit of progress here. So all, all good for him. And Chris Laroche goes through and past Xavier Georges as well. So, Frenchman passing fellow Frenchman, here is third place in 2.11 open and that is now with Philippe Lou up ahead of Anthony Fournier with uh, Christopher Laroche leading class, Christophe Lissandre running in second, Lissandre having I think the most successful 2.11 driver here at Hockenheim if my records are uh, up to date and correct and uh, of course outright 
race winner here in race two in 2017, as we told you during race one of the programme. But on board with Jason McAnulty, still all over the back of fence, Bala seems to have the pace. Bala hasn't been able to get away from everybody. And McAnulty going for the outside line again, down into turn five. Can he make it stick? He's trying to now. Ben Spaller's seen him, gives him a bit of room. McAnulty has to go on the curbs. Now, what did we say earlier on? If he can stick it out on the outside line, very often that leads to the inside. Later in the lap, he's still on the outside. He's still braving it out, but as they come into the next corner, he has got position and takes the lead. Great move by Jason McAnulty into lead position here at Hockenheim. Ben Spaller is down to second. That was a super move between both drivers. Great respect for racing between the pair of them and John Rass now can get stuck in and maybe have a go at getting back into second position this time though perhaps at the expense of Vince Baller McAnulty then our race leader Tamas Fazan still ever present in fourth place as he has been so far in this one Rass starting to put the pressure on this is good news for Jason McAnulty because if Vince Baller gets caught up in a battle for second he might be able to break the toe which is what Baller couldn't do in the opening stages of the race. Here's the production, first and second. Sven Pettersson still busy chasing the race leader, Mark Yates. The gap ebbing and flowing at different points of the circuit. So if we see a reversal of the race one result, which we've got on the cards at the moment, then these two will leave equal on points from Hockenheim as we head to Paul Ricard, our second event of the 2019 season such a superb calendar put together as now looking down the inside line Sven Pettersson challenges hard but holding on to the lead is Mark Yates problems for Philippe Lou who's being ushered off the circuit 77 car front runner in the 211s not having the best of races Daniel Palmer here challenging Christophe Lissard who's running second in the 2.11s. Palmer looks like he's on for a much better result than he did in race number one. He was 16th in race number one and towards the top 10 in this one. There's the onboard shot of Lissandra being passed by Daniel Palmer. It's the battle for the production class with Mark Yates still out front from Sven Pettersson. As I said earlier in the race, the gap tends to ebb and flow, but Sven starting to try and really in the race leader. He can afford the wider line here, of course. All Yates could do, really, is carry on with his racing line or defend if he has to. This is the run around the Parabolica. And Pedersen getting closer at this stage. And he's going to make a move. He's on the outside line here, which is going to convert to the inside at Spitzkera. Turn five, side by side. This is going to be the lead of the production class for Sven Pedersen. I tell you what, Mark Yates looked almost resigned to that. That was a fast sweep round the outside of Turn 4 Parabolica by the new leader Sven Pettersson. If he stays there, it'll be a double win for him here at Hockenheim. Mark Yates, I don't think losing out too much, but as I say, he did kind of look a little bit resigned to that. On board with Christophe Lissandra and going past John Engelbors, the new Belgian driver. Welcome to the championship, Christophe. Sandra in the 92 car goes through as well. Nikolai Ibsen is there. John Rass losing out to Tamas Vazan. So Rass not looking as happy as he did in the very early stages of this race. And Tamas Vazan running well there with Nikolai Ibsen still to the back of this trio. It is still Jason McAnulty up ahead of Benz Baller. This is the scrap for third place overall and of course the V6 category. We never quite know how these races are going to go. With half an hour any, in, in race time, anything can happen. So, just to recap, it's Jason McAnulty, the race leader at the minute, from Bent Spaller. Battle for third we were looking at. Thierry Verheist here in the 17, up ahead of Daniel Palmer. Verheist running eighth overall, seventh in class for the V6s. And there is Daniel Palmer in the 21, the Swede, on for a top 10 here, which is much, much better than race number one. For Palmer, we ride on board with Xavier Georges once again. Not that far behind the lead group, but remember, started off in second position, has to take a little bit of uh, avoiding action there as we go on board again with John Rass. So 
Ras here again challenging for third position. That was Dave Carr that had just been passed, incidentally, the open class runner. A little bit of bodywork flying off there, I think, as two cars got very close together. Bence Baller is back and challenging for the lead. Baller having a look here at the number 11 of Jason McAnulty. He's got the inside line. Bence Baller's read this very well and goes through, reclaims the lead. But Jason McAnulty holding on to it. He's got the inside line for the next corner. Racing by definition, pa passing for places and repassing. But Baller finally gets back through. Jason McAnulty relegated and Bence Baller's having a renaissance here. Back into lead position. Jason McAnulty has got all the hard work to do once again. What a thrilling race we're having in this second race of the season for the 2019 Avon Tyres Lotus Cup Europe. Jason McAnulty, having had the lead, finds himself back down in second place. John Rass challenging for third. Now it's Tamas Fazan still holding on to it at the moment. Three championships between these two drivers. Very sideways moment there for the 81, but he collects it up. There wasn't enough loss of momentum to allow John Ratt to go through. Back with Ben Spaller and Jason McAnulty. Five minutes on the clock remaining. Xavier Georges looking at the back end of Nikolai Ibsen. So third place between four cars. And then a little bit of a gap back to Christopher Laroche, still the, by far the leading 2-11. Sven Pedersen here leading in the productions. Still got the attentions of Mark Yates there, so the production battle is not finished by any stretch of the imagination. Spence Baller passes Yates, second in production, now about to pass the race leader through Barabolica, which he does. He is through safely. Nikolai Ibsen about to put a challenge in here on John Rass. Can't quite get close enough. You'll see the production runners ahead of them, but now goes through on the inside line. I don't think John Rass saw that. And Ebsen goes through. That was a super move by Ebsen passing John Rass to take fourth position. Tamas Fazan still immediately ahead of us, plus the two production car runners in the mix as well. But that was a great move by the Dane, who's really having to work hard to reclaim track position after that slightly recalcitrant start off the uh, off the grid Xavier George is still fifth Daniel Palmer with Winnie Klein immediately in front of him at the moment Thierry Verheist as well just ahead of Winnie Klein the German and there's a door open here and Palmer I think he's going to slot through can't quite do it maybe on the next corner is there a gap here yes there is Klein seen him Good racing from Winnie Klein, who might try and fight back. Winnie Klein, 13th race, number one. Tenth at the moment in this one. On board with Nikolai Ibsen. Nikolai now challenging a podium and could get it because Fazan gets sideways and th loses all his momentum and loses third place. So it's Ben Spaller, the race leader now. Jason McAnulty, second. Nikolai Ibsen, who I think was, was uh, as far back as six earlier on in the race, has clawed his way back onto the podium. What a race from the Dane, and what a race we've had from the lead. Play swaps are plenty. There is John Rass now up ahead of Xavier Georges in sixth place. So Xavier now in sixth. Thomas Fazan didn't lose any more places and stays in fourth position in the 81 car. That's to add to six in race number one. The chequered flag, though, is being readied for Ben Spaller to take the first win in the defence of his title from Jason McAnulty, who finishes in second. Third place goes to Nikolai Ibsen from Thomas Fazan, John Rass and Xavier Jaws. Chris LaRoche makes it a double for the LaRoche team in 2.11. Heading home, the two production car runners. The productions again, won by Sven Pettersson, who is delighted with that. Mark Yates takes second position there in the 32 car. Third in class for the productions will go to Kai Sederholm. Confirmation of the result. Ballard, McAnulty, Neeps on the podium outright. And B6, Thomas Fazan, next from John Rass. And Xavier Georges, Chris Laroche in first place, 211. From Thierry Verhees, Daniel Palmer, and Winnie Klein completing the top 10. 11th went to Christophe Lissard, a second in 2.11 from Philippe Lou, then Anthony Fournier and Ian Fennec, Janos Santa, Natalie Junin Frache, Istvan Kurali, Sven Pedersen winning the productions from Mark Yates, Dave Carr finishing in 20th place, head of Eric Libor, third in production, Kai Cederholm, then John Engelbors, Jean Pierre Junin Frache, Robbie Milson, and David McInulty. Ben's
congratulations, overall win. Obviously yesterday didn't go quite as you'd hoped, but does today make up for it? Uh, yes, definitely. It was quite a good race with uh, uh, Jason and John. It's, and also the track was like driving on ice in the beginning. It's like it was raining during the night. It was quite the track itself was quite greasy. So in the first few laps, I was actually holding up the guys behind me quite a bit. But then I started pulling away, and uh, then I made a mistake, so Jason could overtake me. Then you know I needed a few laps to you know put my head uh, head in uh, its proper place, get my uh, find my pace properly. Uh, I started closing up on uh, Jason quite quickly, and then he did the mistake. Then we had a nice little back and forth for three, four corners. But then I managed to overtake him and uh, made quite a healthy lead for myself in the end. Nikolai, congratulations. Two podiums this weekend. How was it dealing with the change of conditions between race one and race two? Uh, I think it was quite easy because it was dry when we got up this morning, so we had a dry setup. Obviously, it was a bit cold, but uh, my setup was perfect, I think. I had a bad start. I started from fourth, and I think I was seventh after the first corner. So I was just hanging on all the way. I got one by one and ended up third, which was brilliant. Chris, congratulations. It's been a great weekend for you and your brother with two first places. What are your hopes for this season? Euh, merci beaucoup. Euh, bah pour le reste de la saison, ça va être, euh, on espère, euh, comme ça a commencé euh, ce week-end, c'est vrai qu'on a commencé euh, euh, vraiment très très bien. La voiture est vraiment super bien réglée, on se sent vraiment très très bien dans la voiture. Donc euh, on remercie déjà euh, bah, toute la team RCC qui nous ont fait une voiture extraordinaire. Et puis bah, on espère que pour le reste de la saison, euh, ce soit pareil, aussi bien que, que ce week-end. Voilà. Marc, Sven, congratulations, first and second again. Uh, Mark, you spent quite a lot of the race at the front. How was it? Uh, it was good. It was a good start to the race. Um, the accident in the complex with the wave yellows sort of broke my flow, as it were. Um, Sven caught me back up and got past, and that was it, really. So it, it wasn't easy at all. And then I was really scared for Mark, as I'm always when he, he's behind me. <laughs> but I think I was also lap, a bit, um, let's say, lucky with the lappings this time. Yeah. So that helped me. But it was a really even race. Time-wise, I think we were spot on, really. Danny, you had a great race yesterday. You spent some time in third place in the production class. Unfortunately, you couldn't make today's race. Can you tell us why? Uh, yeah, yesterday's race was a really good race to me. Um, I started fourth, I think, and uh, I got into second place at one point, but unfortunately, due to a spin, um, it put me back into fifth and I had to battle my way back up to fourth again, but overall, a good race. Uh, and we woke up this morning and the mechanics have told us that there's no compression in the engine, so they don't know what the problem is, so we're going to have to wait till we get back to the UK to sort that out. The La Roche brothers lead the championship as they head to home tarmac at Paul Ricard next time out. Bench Baller second overall, but leading the V6 Cup Sven Pettersson leads the production runners and he's third overall in the championship. John Rass fourth from Christoph Lissandra and Nikolai Ibsen completing the top six. A happy pair of brothers will leave you with the podia from the weekend's racing. Thanks for watching. <laughs>